Welcome back to our final video where we are kind of wrapping up parsing SEC document filings. These are for the ones that come after 2009. Alrighty, so the last video we kind of talked about how to normalize all of this information that we basically had been parsing. So repairing what needed to be repaired, cleaning up what needed to be cleaned up. And then we transitioned into doing basically what I would call searches. So I've had people reach out in the past, like asking me like, hey, how do I search the entire document for this particular word and, and this, this and that? And so basically what I did first is I showed you how you need to kind of structure certain things. So for example, if you're searching for words, categorize the words, store those categories in a dictionary where the key is the category and the value is the list of words that you want to search. From here, you would loop through each document as you normally do. In this particular type of search, you would be actually grabbing the normalized text that we cleaned up because that's going to be the easiest one to search. You probably, to be completely honest, you probably should do even one extra more step. And I don't know why I didn't do it in the previous one. You probably should lowercase all your text because everything up here is lowercase and it won't be case sensitive. Well, it's going to be case sensitive. So if everything's uppercase, it's not going to denote all uppercase pricing and all lowercase pricing. So that's probably an extra step I should have taken. Um, from there, you take all the normalized text. This is your master dictionary. You're going to start looping through each page of normalized text. And then what you're going to do is you're going to loop through each list of words that you want to search for. You're going to check and find all the matching words, and you're going to store those results in a kind of like a mini dictionary that you then store in the bigger dictionary, and that bigger dictionary you store in the master filing document. So from here, that's how you would do a, what is it, a, a word search. Here's another big one people like doing. Handle the link search. So I want to find all the links in the particular filing. Why would I care about that? Well, let's go show you a big old messy one. This guy right here. <laughs> so these guys have a bunch of links all over the place. They take you to different parts of the actual document. More importantly, and then this is the kind of the really useful part, is if you go down, I gotta find an example first. I wanna find a good one. It's a lot of pages in this particular exhibit. I think it's this one. This is a good one. You'll notice each one of these is lap, sorry, wrapped in a anchor tag. And that anchor tag has an attribute called name. This will give you context as to what is on that page. That's very useful, very helpful information that you can then use. Now, this isn't going to be perfect, and it definitely can be refined a little bit more but this is gonna show you how to get that information and then store it in an organized fashion. So from here, if you wanted to grab all, basically the links, you gotta do just a couple different things than what you were doing up here. You can keep that pretty much the same, everything there. Um, what I like to is I like to store everything at the end. This one, we're gonna change this from normalized page, text dictionary to the page dictionary. In this particular example, I want to loop through the code, the actual HTML code itself. From here, you can you know, initialize this dictionary again however you want. I'm just going to call it link anchor dictionary. Keep it simple. And then from here, you're going to just kind of do what you were doing before. You're just going to loop through all the pages like we've done before. You just got to make sure things kind of line up the way it needs to line up. Now, I'm gonna put that there. And then from here, um, you would, uh, uh, I'm gonna call that pages dictionary. I'm very particular, if you can already tell. And then this would be the page code. So grab the page code. And then this would be pages dictionary. No, don't do that. Um, and then from here, you want to find all the anchors. So something you can do is, um, you can store in a variable. So anchors found, 
and it would equal the page code that you currently are on in the loop. You're gonna do a find all. In this particular example, you're gonna find all the anchors, but you want all those anchors to have an attribute called name. Now, if you just want the attribute to exist, you set the value equal to true. So true means it exists. What you're saying is, as long as it exists, it doesn't have to equal a particular value, I just need all the anchors that have an attribute called name. And then from here, um, you can, this is again more for user display, number of anchors found would be number found, and then that would equal the length of that list that is returned to us, because remember, this is gonna be a list if there are any. Now, if there's nothing in the list, congratulations, there's zero. So from here, just to kind of speed things up a little bit, uh, what am I gonna do? I'll show you that part. So how would you store it? That's the part that most people are concerned about. Well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your link anchor dictionary. You're gonna have the key be the page number that you currently are on in this loop. You're gonna have, each anchor is gonna have an ID. Well, you're gonna define that ID by taking your anchors found list and you're gonna call the enumerate function around it. So that will create an index and then you're gonna also have the value in that list. So you're gonna take your anchor ID, you're gonna add one to it so that way it doesn't start at zero and that will be your key. And then for your value, you're gonna have the anchor that it's looping through in this list be the actual value inside the dictionary. In this example, I'm using dictionary comprehension. You can do that. So in this example, dictionary comprehension, in previous examples, I've done, um, what is it, list comprehension. So it is useful to have kind of both, um, you know, in your arsenal, so be it. And then finally, what I'm probably just gonna do is I'll, I'll take all this information and I'll kind of show you what the end result should look like. Just again, for time's sake. Because at this point, it's the same exact structure. You're still gonna loop through everything. You're just looking for very particular things. So in this one, I was doing my word search. This one, I was doing my link search. And then in this one, I was gonna be doing, um, in the final one, I was gonna show you how to do tables. So it follows pretty much the same exact logic that I was doing up here, but instead of finding all those anchors, you're gonna be finding all of those tables. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna store that in the dictionary and then still use dictionary comprehension to kind of create this mini dictionary that contains all the information that you need. And then at the end of all of this, you're gonna store the results from each kind of parsing or very specific parsing that you're doing or search that you're doing inside your master filings document. So I'm going to run this. I'm praying to God it works because I just copied a whole bunch of code and there's no guarantee it's going to work. Where is it? Page is normalized. Page normalized. I'm pretty sure it's not going to work. Yeah, of course, right? Everything's got to break on you sometimes, right? <laughs> So it's gonna loop through each document and then each page of that document. And then it's gonna you know, tell you that it's all been searched and it's gonna tell you it's been you know, searched for anchors, it's gonna be searched for tables, and you can tell, it'll tell you how many tables it found on each page of the document. So um, this is just, again, feedback for you as you're looping this that, hey, hey it's still running in the background because I'm sure some of you are gonna do this across like hundreds of filings, um, and then other of you are probably gonna do like by through, but in this case, it's still gonna show it to you. So at, really at, at that point, you, you pretty much have built your master SEC filing document. There's additional things that you can do, additional searches that you can do, and, and really kind of to close off this series, I'm just gonna kind of introduce that. So I'm sure some of you, you're gonna love those tables, and you're gonna look at them, and you're gonna go like, this is horrible. It's messy, it's not clean. Why would you even give this to me? Well, lucky for you, I've defined a function that will clean most of them for you. It's not gonna be perfect because unfortunately, there are a lot of different types of tables that are found inside of SEC filing documents. I have to just explore enough and I've gotta be able to understand the patterns. I just haven't done enough of that, but I still wanted to provide you with something. And so really all this function is gonna do is it's gonna take that table dictionary 
that you're inserting up here and it's going to loop through each table. And then all it's going to do is it's going to take the HTML version of that table. It's going to find all the rows. And then what it's going to do for each row inside of that table, it's going to loop through each element that it finds. So it's going to do a row find all um, table element. And then it's going to basically take that element. It's going to grab the text and strip it. So it kind of removes all the messy characters. This is using list comprehension inside of list comprehension. So a little bit complicated, but I, I try to show you kind of what's going on. Um, and then all I do is I then take this new table dictionary that I initialize up above. I still use the same table ID, but I add another key to it, which is original table. And I have that equal just the HTML version. And then I add a second key called parsed table. And then that would obviously equal the parsing that you just did right here. Finally, I kind of demonstrate that that's not going to clean everything. There are some additional steps that you can take to clean your data if you want. Um, that's why I put it after here. So you can incorporate this or you don't have to incorporate. It's up to you. But this one will remove all the dollar signs. And then this one will remove all the empty rows. So you're going to have to play around a little bit, unfortunately. But it's, it's there for you. Uh, now, this handles the case where there's actually a table. If there's not a table, I just have the original table and parse table equal none. So there's a value associated with it, but it's just nothing. Um, additionally, I know some of you are going to probably want to do some relatively complex searches. What do I mean by that? Well, some of you, for example, might want to search for all the centered headers. So for example, like this guy right here, you might want this. Now, in this example, you'd actually get this particular element using the linked anchor method I showed you up above. But you can also find it by looking for the paragraphs that have an align attribute that is equal to center. And so what you do is for beautiful soup, you define a function where you pass through your tag and then you can basically define all these criteria that you're, you want your tag to match. And if it matches all those criteria, then you only return that tag. So it'll pass through every tag in your document, but it will only return the tags that meet all your criteria. Now, in this particular example, I kind of easily, well, I basically check out early if there's not even an align attribute uh, associated with the tag. I just say, well, just leave the function then. If there is an align um, attribute, what I do is I define my criteria next. And so in this example, um, I want my first criteria to be that the name of the tag is a paragraph tag. That's great. I want to make sure that the parent tag that is above this particular tag, I don't want it to be a table element. So you will find centered header tags inside of a table element. And I don't want those ones. So this is my second criteria that it has to meet. And then finally, I want to make sure that that align attribute is centered. So if it equals all three of those attributes, then return the, the text of that particular tag. In this example, I also search for bolded text, but I am now doing it with, um, what is it? I, I'm, I'm adding an extra condition, which is I don't want the ones that are included in the table elements. And so if you kind of want to see what this would look like in action, um, it, again, it's following almost the identical same logic as we were doing up there. Um, you're, you're still grabbing all the page code. You're still creating a dictionary. In this case, you just name it differently and you're still looping through all the page numbers and you're still grabbing that page code. But here is the kind of the different part. You're going to do a find all, but you're going to pass through that custom function that you defined up above. So here you're going to see what it returns. No guarantee it's going to return anything of use, but it'll be there for you. And so I'll just show you very quickly centered headers found. And I'll, so I'll say if number found is greater than zero, then sorry, not then uh, actually print it. And I'll put that after I define my one up here. So this is just to show you, 
hey, it's actually doing something. It's not just for show. It's returning everything, whether you want it or not. Um, but you know, it, it's there for you if you if you need it. Um, I think this is the one search for centered headers. Um, oh, I think this one it still returns everything. Did I not define the text tag dot get text strip? Uh, well, yeah, that's why. Because that one, I'm sorry. This one really doesn't do much for you, so you can kind of remove that part. Um, but at some point, you should probably strip the text if you wanted it. Um, otherwise, you know, you're going to be in this really complicated spot where it's like, you know, you're going to have all this HTML code, but none of it's actually going to be meaningful unless you parse it. So this is just to show you that you can do some very, very customized searches. And in fact, I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to look through these documents and see if you can find patterns like this stuff right here. I can tell you right away that text indent is going to probably be something you're going to have to leverage because that seems to be something that you can use to ideally find those elements. And then it's probably going to be bolded and it's probably going to be italicized. No guarantee. Um, like for example, these ones aren't italicized, but you can see up here that one's italicized and all sorts of stuff. So you're going to have to play around a little bit to kind of get what you need to get, but this is the framework that you should follow when it comes to getting all this information. Um, and then naturally, once you kind of have it in that dictionary, you might be asking like, what do I do next? It's up to you. Some people might want to store all of this in a text file. Some of you might want to store all of it in a JSON file or something along that nature. It's really up to you. You're going to have to be a little bit careful though, because some of this is considered objects. And so you want to just make sure that when you, when you dump it somewhere that it's actually going to dump the content that you were expecting. But with all that being said, we finished the series. So if you have any final questions about parsing these documents, trying to understand how to search for something, anything along that nature, feel free to put it down below. I might not necessarily know how to do it exactly. I can take a look at it. Um, and I might be also the person who delivers the bad news and says what you're trying to do is just going to be way too painful on yourself and you're probably not going to want to do it. But I'm always open to examining it. So again, any questions, feel free to put them down below. And also, if you could, please make sure to like the video. We always appreciate the support. And if you're not already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos on a whole host of topics. So we will cover next old filings because that's going to be a fun one that I'm not going to really want to cover, but we're going to have to because there's no other option. Um, that's kind of what's up next. And then I would say the XBRL is probably after that. That's a whole other beast, but it's good information. So thank you again for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the final, or oh, sorry, the next series.